This is Cybert signing into General's Evolution on the map Sand Serpent once again for a best of seven 1v1 between the purple China tank in the north. This is E1A2 and the blue China tank in the south. This is blues. Blues versus E1A2, courtesy of Josh C. A big thanks to that guy over on Patreon for sponsoring this show match. He said, I don't really care. I just want to see some Gen Evo action. And so I contacted Segoro and he made it happen. Now, things have been a little bit quiet on the Gen Evo front. Well, the main two developers, Segoro and Gunship Mark II, there are some other folks who are involved in that project, but those are the two main fellas. They've been quite busy. They got busy lives, they got jobs, they got personal things to deal with. So they have been a bit busy and the engineer gets sniped in the north. A nice kill there by Blues, especially considering E1A2 grabbed the building in the middle of the map and the oil derrick as well. So the fact that Blues got the kill on the engineer in the north while securing his own oil derrick is a nice win and it doesn't quite even the odds, but it is a nice win, especially with this early expansion coming up here from Blues. But a huge thanks to Segoro for helping me line up this show match. As I said, things have been a little bit quiet on the front with Gen Evo. Is this gonna be an engineer snipe as well? The Gat does not notice the engineer, but he does get the kill, and that will secure the engineer kill as well for E1A2. A good start for E1A2. We'll see how this expansion Ooh, it's going to be a propaganda center right from the get-go instead of an expansion. Yeah, we'll be able to clean up the MiGs. No, the MiGs do manage to survive, but the truck does not. And e Blues is going to have to restart that truck immediately. By the way, the way this, uh, the way this for show match is formatted, game one is predetermined Sand Serpent with this mirror matchup. After that, loser picks map loser picks from a set of matchups as well so there's a predetermined set of matchups and the loser gets to pick which one of those matchups they're going to play which if you're coming from a different rts game that does sound a little bit strange but that is pretty typical for generals well for the zero hour community and then also for gen evo as well so anyways, huge thanks to Segoro and Gunship Mark II for all of their work on this mod. But of course, things have been a little bit quiet on the development front. And I know a number of the players are also hoping for that uh, version 0.4 of the beta to come out, which almost certainly will not be this year. I mean, it could happen, I guess. Uh, Segoro and Gunship Mark II could almost miraculously manage to pull that off. But it is a huge amount of work. And as I said, you know, the two of them are just developing this mod in their free time. And they got a lot of other stuff going on. So that is that. But again, huge thanks to Josh C for uh, making this show match happen. He's joining the current line of videos that basically only exist because of Patreon. So the last four videos I've put up, five if you count this one, have all been matches or videos that have happened because of sponsorship over on Patreon. So huge thanks to all of those people. And of course, they're generating free content for everybody to enjoy. Couple of gats in the north, couple of gats in the middle, and that engineer was not ready for the fact that there were two gats over there. And the engineer was sent to repair the bridge as well. So that bridge is opened back up which is not something you necessarily see all that often. A lot of times in Gen Evo, once the bridges get destroyed, they do not get rebuilt. But in this case, they are going to get rebuilt. Couple of gats and a couple of migs clear out the middle of the map, and E1A2 may have found himself a bit of a foothold. He's got a couple of ECMs being packed along, so that will help him shut down his opponent's units. But we'll see if these gats can cut through the numbers. One gat gets silenced, gets EMP basically, as the couple of remaining gats from E1A2 
do get the victory on the ground. A Dragon Tank coming in, but more Gats reinforcing. And it looks like E1A2 has secured the middle of the map with his ECM and Gat combo. This is a good amount of Gats, though, now from Blues, ready and waiting. Mix are going to come in. They're going to be able to pop one of those Gats. ECMs get the lockdown on a second Gat, and the Focus Fire is going to be good enough for E1A2 to get a couple of more kills under his belt and goodbye to that last get the numbers of e1a2 are not particularly scary but they are scary enough to keep blues's reinforcements from well we'll see with this bunker coming in and uh, no the mig firestorm catches the reinforcements the attempted pincer movement didn't work out as blues had hope but he's got just one too many gets he always had one of them firing. It looked like all of his gats got shut down, but it was a visual deception. And instead, there was always a gat at least firing. And now the tides have shifted. Blues has been able to break out of this soft contain. And E1A2 is going to have to regroup a little bit closer to his base. Mix coming in. Firestorm does not ignite. Building does get cleaned up there. But without that Firestorm igniting, couple of those gats do survive one gat four ecms almost the perfect lockdown situation there for e1a2 but it just didn't work out barely blues had maybe one too many units it looked like if he had one fewer gats e1a2 might have been able to hold that until his reinforcements came in especially with the catch of the reinforcing gats and now blues has quite a group of gats Meg's getting cleaned up as they try and cross back over. Maybe a bunker gets busted there. Gats backing up from the front line. Sh uh, shockwave artillery. A little too much Kane's Wrath there. But uh, the artillery barrage getting called in. I'm guessing it was by E1A2 as Blues seems to have split his units. No, it was, it was by Blues. Blues taps the... Uh, Taps the ore trucks, not much more than that. Command center for the build radius. This is one of those things that's going to be adjusted in version four is the insane command center build radius here. As you can see, Blues deploying a barracks in his enemy's base and it hasn't actually been spotted yet. E1A2 is being kept busy at the front line and instead of dealing with this command center and this engineer, which is just standing by waiting ready and waiting to go uh okay now he's heading into the i thought he was going to be going actually for the war factory and okay e1a2 may have actually spotted it he's now aware of what is going on blue's a little bit low on cash e1a2 floating a bit more he's got a bit more in the bank which, you know, there are some times where it is nice to have a little bit more in the bank, to have a little bit of cash on hand. But oftentimes you do just want to be spending that money. Well, that's a lot of gats going down. And that was a meat grinder for E1A2. He may have leveled the playing field more than you should have expected, especially with the uh, numbers that Blues had initially. Gats pushing in. They are going to be able to grab one supply truck. Oh, they don't even get the second. The second supply truck does manage to escape. This barracks hasn't totally been dealt with yet. So if this bunker could get established, that might be trouble for E1A2. But for the current moment, E1A2 is doing an okay job of locking that area down. He hasn't let the damage get out of control yet. And he is descending upon this area with more and more units. Blues' expansion down here in the south has been paying huge dividends for him all over the course of this game. Migs going for another strike. They keep trying to break these defenses and then they just get rebuilt. Blues finally getting shut down. Not so much at the front line. This oil there did get taken out a long time ago. Actually, I think it got taken out by Blues with a uh, Dragon Tank some time ago. E1A2, he's feeling lucky. He might be able to bust right out of here, and Blues has thrown maybe too many units away. His front line is looking weak. That bunker can be very deceptive, though. Cluster Mine or an EMP 
gets called in, but it doesn't actually land. E1A2 reforms his front line. Ready to go. Blues trying to rebuild some more defenses. Two bunkers can be difficult to bust. Hardy Barrage gets called in. I mean, I would assume this is by E1A2 so that he can attack alongside with it, but we'll see. Yeah, Artie Barrage lands on the expansion. Doesn't actually go for the front line. It's not to bust a bunker or anything like that. And I have to hand it to Blues. He has been able to do everything that we have seen without much of an air force. Without much aircraft at all. Bunkers are strong, but ECMs are here to deflect at least some of the rockets. Gats going to just try and target down those buildings. They break one bunker. The second bunker still standing strong. It falls, and the building gets ejected as well. A fresh bunker gets added into the mix, but there are so many Gats, so many Battle Masters that are actually able to pop these bunkers almost as quickly as they get built by Blues. The front line collapsing, and E1A2 may be able to take the back the middle of the map. He's had it for, oh, he had it oh so long ago. He lost control of it, and now it is back under his control. The ECMs greatly reducing the effectiveness of all of those tank hunters that were inside of these structures. Borgat's gonna be able to cross the bridge into the north. Migs ignite the firestorm in the middle. E1A2 backs off. I think he only loses one unit to the friendly fire there. And yeah, E1A2 decides to back off. That's the that's the thing. Even if he takes the middle of the map, it's not quite enough to just break to take the middle of the map. You still have to break down that front door. Just sitting on the bridge. A dangerous spot indeed. Double gat cannon. Yeah, every moment that the Air Force can be wasting its time fighting in the bottom left-hand corner of the map is better for Blues. Mix coming in, should be able to bust one of these bunkers. We'll go for the tanks instead, get all three of the tanks and a little bit of splash damage on the bunkers as well. Unfortunately, the supply truck will sacrifice itself and that front line got busted extremely efficiently by E1A2. That was a great defensive bust by E1A2. Couple of tanks being fed into the middle of the map. They will get eaten up and destroyed. The outer defenses fall. Blues has spent so much time and money building up those defenses, and they are coming crumbling down. He's still got three bunkers here. If these are full of tank hunters, then that could still be a lot of firepower. Mix land another firestorm here for E1A2. That Air Force has been so incredibly important for him. And somehow he snuck a listening outpost through all of this. He's dropped his own barracks. E1A2 trying to pull some shenanigans on Blues, trying to cause some confusion and some mayhem. But ultimately, it is the army that is getting the work done. It is the army that is pushing the front line forward for E1A2. He is pretty much out of cash, but if he can break this island, that takes a huge chunk of momentum away from Blues. Artie Strike gets called in, doesn't get the last MiG, but gets everything else on the deck. This barracks is here, but once again, these engineers are not quick to jump into any kind of a building. The command center has been broken, which that is the end of that building cheese that was coming at E1A2 from the bottom left-hand corner of the map. But the war factory will be grabbed. A great capture here by Blues. He's just gonna slowly take over E1A2's base as E1A2 charges his way across the map. I can't believe he actually got that second barracks up and E1A2 didn't notice it, wasn't able to do anything about it. Fresh War Factory being deployed in the middle of the map by E1A2. Cluster Bomb, no, it's going to be a Carpet Bomb. It does get stopped. Nice snipe. A couple of Carpet Bombs land, but not any damage done to the main army of E1A2. And he might be calling in his own Carpet Bomb on top of what used to be his War Factory. 
doesn't break the gat. It doesn't break the war factory. Barely. Blues keeps his build radius and his hopes alive. He drops another barracks. And he does... Man, if he could grab that internet center, that would also be fantastic. And Emperor Overlord onto the front line. An airfield deployed right here on the front line of Blues' proxy war factory that was stolen away from E1A2. But the army will descend. E1A2 has yet to crack the main base of Blues, but he is at least going to stop this goofball proxy building war in his own base. E1A2 will shut down these Emperor Overlords. And the ECM's coming back to the front line, coming back to prominence here in this game. That bridge in the north is still there. I almost didn't notice that that blue building. If, if he hadn't attacked that, I don't know if I would have noticed that barracks was there. So that's a good catch by E1A2. I'm glad that he spotted that. Blue's trying to re-expand to the south. He's trying to stop this expansion from becoming a stronghold for E1A2. Emperor Overlord's trying to cross the map. They are quite slow. They'll grab at least one supply truck. Cluster mine is here. So E1A2 might accidentally run over that and lose some units. Fully heroic Gat, Gat gets eaten up there. And Blues is hoping that his frontline bunker wall will be able to hold off this army. E1A2 decides to pivot. Heads back to his base. And these Emperor Overlords, they may actually get a complete sweep. They may be able to completely clear this section of the map. Okay, I guess it's back to neutral territory. It's uh, sort of a no man's land once again. The middle of the map between these two bases. I do appreciate how much these players have been playing around the edges of the map. Sand Serpent, 90% of the games on this map, I feel like the bridges, the three bridges all get destroyed. And then this map just becomes a middle ground slog between the two players. And I feel like that's what we're about to see. Carpet Bomb gets sniped. Carpet Bomb on the return. Gets sniped as well. Ah, a couple of bombs did drop. Not uh, not any real damage done. Emperor of Lord gets firestormed. Ooh, Battlemaster Mark II doesn't die though. Very close to it. Anyways, I feel like this is the place where a lot of these Sand Serpent matches get to. Firestorm gets called in. Ignites on top of the bunkers. Breaks them down below half HP. Two of the bunkers get busted. That would have actually been a fantastic opportunity to punch down the front door. But of course, he's worried about this side army. He's worried about the counterattack. This cluster mine still causing problems for E1A2. He never cleared them out. He never got the scan or the reveal to see them, and he's lost a couple of units to them. The front door did get busted, but it ended up being for not much consequence. Airfield is here. Finally, Blues decides that air power is a relevant factor in, factor in this game. Again, does get grabbed. Blues in E1A2. Toe-to-toe -to -toe in this case. Artie Barrage gets called in. ECM's on the front line for E1A2. One of the Emperor Overlords explode. Two more of our are about to get EMP'd and shut down by these ECMs. Gats get sniped. Mix gets sniped, excuse me, by the Gats as the Emperor Overlords get overwhelmed. But maybe the reinforcements, oh, it's just a couple of Gats, but there's more and more ever parading in. This might be a death trap for E1A2 as Blues surrounds this army. Mix with a massive firestorm on top of those reinforcements, cutting down Blues' army. And suddenly E1A2 is once again in an ECM-dominated space. He's got almost as many ECMs as he has Gats, but fortunately he does have a good number of Battlemaster Mark IIs other than that. He will hold his position. He's a little bit wary as to whether or not he can actually break this location. Is that bunker empty? That bunker might be empty. 
So <laughs> that bunker, it looks scary, but really it's uh, not much to write home about. Tank hunters will evac. They're going to try and run for the hills. A couple of them are heroic. Carpet bomb? Yeah, carpet bomb. Doesn't break the front line, though. And return fire. Return fire carpet bomb. There are three gats here. So, yeah, as long as they're positioned well, they will be able to snipe this before it does much damage. Oh, it actually got a lot further than I was thinking. Cleans up two tanks. Does some hefty damage to the bunker. But, of course, we're expecting the MiGs to really be here to help out. They are now on the attack path. Once again, this cluster mine from Blues getting value for him. Another cluster mine. Oh, EMP, but he fired it a little bit early. Now it's going to be the return fire EMP. A complete whiff, or basically a complete whiff there, because the army had already moved out of position. But E1A2... We'll see if he's able to deal with this mix, finally, from Blues, and they get a massive shot against E1A2. He loses a giant chunk of his army. I mean, in terms of pure units, he still has a number of units, but you have to remember four or five of them are ECMs. EMP wears off. Blues did manage to maintain a little bit of a foothold here. He might be able to retake this uh, this location, this bottom left corner of the map. Blues does still have two oil derricks under his control. E1A2 only has the one. So that is something to keep in mind as this game stretches past the 20 minute mark. Blues definitely has that advantage. E1A2 has the massive amount of internet centers, which definitely offsets that. Okay, yeah, E1A2 does have even more internet centers than I thought. Adds on another nuclear reactor. E1A2 has plenty of cash coming in, but he doesn't have much of a bank. He is doing a good job of spending every dollar as it comes in. Makes ignite another firestorm. They will get some decent damage on that nuclear reactor. Don't quite take it. They didn't actually take the build. I thought for sure that building was going to burn down, but no, it actually didn't. Carpet bomb? Yeah, carpet bomb comes in. Uh, oh no, there's playing against. Two bombs? Oh, three bombs. Close. And. Oiled air goes down. A nice one two punch there by Blues. And the building finally gets busted. And a nuke gets added into the mix as well. Oh, no bombs. I thought, there, I thought a couple of bombs dropped there, but no. As it turns out, nothing. I think there's supposed to be an engineer repairing... Is there supposed to be an engineer? <laughs> I don't know what this command center is doing. Oh, maybe he is going to deploy it just as far as he can go and... Call it a day? I, I don't know what he's doing. Gats crossing over. Bridge goes down. But now these Gats don't have much to do other than just shoot this oil, Derek. So I guess you might as well go to town on it. Mix coming in. They get instantly annihilated. And the Mix do nothing here. As Blues, it looks like, is going to be losing that oil, Derek. And we are down to the nukes. Okay. Nice one-two punch there. Hardy Strike got fired off as well. Not sure which side launched that. May have actually been uh, Blues as he moves in here. Not fast enough to save his oil, Derek. Unfortunately for Blues, he will lose that piece of his late-game economy does manage to hold on to the other oil derrick for now fresh command center getting added on for blues a little bit more build radius towards the middle of the map for him cluster mines still finding damage for blues he got this expansion back up and running blues always sneaking something around the edges of the map Finding a corner to hide out in and finding a way to get a little bit of extra money in his bank. 
fresh war factory being added on so many internet centers for e1a2 i just realized he's floating almost 10 grand he still has not caught up to blues in terms of total resources gathered but yeah he is uh still floating eight grand still a solid eight g's in the bank carpet bomb comes in it'll land a couple of bombs Where's it going? Oh, okay. It's going for the propaganda center. It actually gets it. Gets the whole thing. Propaganda center goes down. Migs get a little bit of a cleanup here on the front line as well. That might have been four or five gats right on the front line in the second line of three or four units. That was a healthy MIG strike coming in there. Propaganda center will be reestablished, and E1A2 lost his nuclear missile as well. Blues less than four minutes until his nuke counts down. Party barrage firing off. Fresh internet center. Fresh nuclear missile ready and waiting. Big strike coming in. Carpet bomb as well. Carpet bomb lands, but there's not much in the area. What is this bunker doing? bunker looks silly just out there by itself migs have identified this uh target in the south of the map supply center is here and well that listening outpost from e1a2 that expansion does get caught and killed once again the expansion in the corner of the map gets locked down bye bye to that expansion blues tried a couple of times and yet again it has been denied at least in terms of long-term establishment e1a2 has a timer that he is racing as a clock that he is trying to rage against he needs to bust open this front line and no i guess he doesn't Nuclear missile gets sold off there. There was originally supposed to be a, a rule that it was no super weapons, and I'm not sure if that got lost in the mix or what, but that is a massive firestorm once again. Double firestorm. Blues almost sending his own units into the abyss as the entire land bridge just turns into a conflagration. Blue fire erupting to the heavens. And now Blues will step out onto the front line, but does he have enough to actually cross the map even if he crushes E1A2 here in the middle? Can he keep the momentum up and step across? Oh, I thought that was an EMP. I was like, did he just EMP his own army? But no, it's cluster mines. Mix will get a good catch. Firestorm doesn't ignite. They don't catch as many units as they could have. E1A2 has reformed his front line. And even with the ECMs, the tank hunters are finding some damage. Is that the last remaining building that can actually be garrisoned on the middle of the map? I think it is. Carpet bomb. A couple of shots will land. Not on the army, but the bombs did fall. Moving across the map is E1A2 once again. And it looks like Blues is going to try and throw some nonsense in his way. One, a Gat Cannon. Oh no, that's actually listening outpost here. I didn't even see that from E1A2. I like the addition of a little bit of production here on the front line. But this land bridge can be difficult to break. Artie Barrage comes in and Blues remounts his defense. Does he have another mix strike to follow this up with? And currently he does not. MIG's coming in from the side. Something just igni ignited that uh that listening outpost. Battle masters get cleaned up. ECM's able to deflect some of the missiles, but not able to deflect the firestorm. As this building stands strong, eating up tank after tank. 
three tanks dying in an instant there to the tank hunters in the building. Blues' front line collapses. ECMs remaining on both sides. Big strike comes in. Gets a chunk. Gets an ECM. Gets the bunkers as well. And because of the ECM deflections, it actually turned into kind of a path of fire rather than the MIG strike hitting wide as it normally does. It ended up making a little trail of fire instead. This is mostly ECMs, but hey, ECMs can lock down everything and then the tank hunters can deal with what remains. A couple of Emperor Overlords here on the front line, a couple of bunkers as well. Blues trying to pull together a last ditch defense here. ECMs here own amongst these tanks. Let's them make shots. No firestorm ignites, but the defense may just be enough. E1A2 uh, backs out once again. A couple of Emperor Overlord reinforcements arriving to the front line, but perhaps arriving a few moments too late. Another Artie Barrage fires off. Carpet Bomb comes in. Artie, bomb, Artie Barrage leads the way. Carpet Bomb gets sniped. I'm not actually sure what happened to that to that uh, aircraft. ECMs from the side of Blues locking down three tanks right there on the front line. Carpet Bomb stops, but it does not land. Firestorm does not ignite. Those ECMs have stopped a couple of critical Firestorms from igniting. Legitimately getting a lot of value for both teams. Every firestorm that they stop from igniting is another couple of tanks that actually make it to the front line. Emperor Overlords getting shut down, but there's going to be the firestorm igniting on top of the entire army of E1A2. The follow-up firestorm is just too much, and the defense holds once again for Blues. His airfield goes down. I don't think he's going to be able to rebuild it in time. Nope. Every single MiG goes down. So that will be a minute or so of no air support. Uh, lose. I do like the cluster mine there. That's a nice touch. If the bridge gets rebuilt, uh... Blues actually, he didn't realize it, but he could have charged across the map. I mean, uh, well, he would have to break down this building. But... Now, I guess this bunker, this bunker might buy enough time. Like, the ECM column with the bunker might legitimately buy enough time for uh, Blues to E1A2 to rebuild. Mix come in. Firestorm does not ignite. Building does get evacuated, though. So I think that is the final building being kind of shut down here in the middle of the map. There are a couple of buildings that can still be garrisoned here in the corner, but not in the middle anymore. They are done for now. As we cross the 30 minute mark and uh, cross the $300,000 mark for these players as well. The numbers are getting quite high. If that was an ECM or a cluster mine, it doesn't matter, it didn't land. Emperor Overlords getting traded back and forth. The army of ECMs looking to re-engage. Cluster Mine, no, it's an EMB. He catches everything. Blues finally finds his advantage. And he presses on forward. The MiGs come in. An ECM firestorm. No way to stop that one from igniting. And finally, the front line has shifted. Blues takes back the middle of the map, but he has not broken this defensive line. This bunker double gat combo is not going to be easy to break unless you have got the support power on hand. The MiGs, oh, Artie Strike comes in. Artie Strike lands on the airfield, but doesn't quite take everything out. Firestorm ignites, but hits nothing. Carpet Bomb is the sandwich that traps these tanks. Between a rock and a hard place, between a carpet bomb and a firestorm. The reinforcements haven't come through yet. Uh, this bridge is still standing, so that's good for blues. 
He's over 420,000 credits total resources gathered. He's got these two expansions back up and running. He's had them up and running for a little while. He's got the proxy barracks moves happening once again. Firestorms are vicious, but the Emperor Overlords can survive at least some of them. And well, you can't necessarily fight a battle on two fronts if you're E1A2. So opening up these side lanes of attack for blues is a good move. In this case, he's not actually able to take advantage of it. He's not able to pressure the front at the same time. While the army was out of position, if he had been able to say Artie Strike or uh, Firestorm the front line, he might have actually been able to get something done. Bunker gets busted. That means those tank hunters are useless as well as both. Oh, then Firestorm doesn't ignite. Blues can keep up some of the momentum. He can keep pressuring, keep pushing. There's still three or four or five Emperor Overlords here on the front line. They do have to be dealt with. But this attack along the side has found some damage, has opened up some space. But Blues may not actually have enough to keep the momentum going. He's Raiding across the map unit by unit one by one he may have finally done it the front line has been broken two emperor overlords remain one heroic and very low on health the other fresh out of the war factory and ready to fight the firestorm catches the war factory it goes down that unit will not spawn and this emperor overlord is the current hope holding the entirety of e1a2 on his shoulders this emperor overlord ranks up steps forward he is here for the challenge he pushes blues back from the brink of defeat e1a2 sends one tank and it will now continue on forward you might want to back up buddy we'll see if your friends can show up to help you out e1a2 lands a carpet bomb and already strike as well he's going for the airfield he's going for the mix they do land but the shots aren't enough one more bomb might have done it our hero emperor breaks down at the front line the barracks is the choice for e1a2 gotta get some units onto the front line gotta do it cheap gotta do it fast who knows what might happen in the next minute blues has taken over the map internet centers almost everywhere approaching 500,000 credits half a million and he's got 20 grand in the bank he's got so much cash he literally can't spend it I don't know, at this point, you might just go, like, quadruple airfield. Airfields are gigantic. They have a huge footprint, so they can be difficult to find the space for. But E1A2 has not been able to rebuild. He's got 10 grand in the bank, but quite possibly he's just been sort of typing his congratulations, or maybe they were discussing at the end of this match. He does have a bunker. That bunker is going to be difficult to bust without ECMs or some kind of support power. But this War Factory should not be established. That War Factory should not survive. And actually the Firestorm helping to burn down that War Factory. The Firestorm catching a lot of these units. A couple of units from Blues will survive this onslaught. But really this is about opening up the front door, keeping the assault going, keeping the parade push, crossing the map. And he's now trying to snipe those power plants. E1A2 is actually uh, okay on that front. Tank Hunter's getting slowed down by these cluster mines. That's actually a good thing. That's a good use of the cluster mine. Even if it doesn't kill anything, it's just keeping those Tank Hunters out of this fight. It's stopping them from doing anything. And the airfield got rebuilt. E1A2, the master of the airfield in this game. Blues, I really feel like he needs just more airfields. Instead, he's going more war factories, triple war factory into the middle of the map. Even as he adds on more production, his bank grows 30 grand in the bank, 550,000 credits total gathered. Artie Strike fires off and a support power comes in from the side. A carpet bomb is looking for its mark. Right on top of the internet centers. It gets a good lineup, cleans up one internet center, cleans up a barracks as well. And I think the propaganda center got nuked once again. Yes, it did by that arty strike. 
double war factory on the front line. Okay, it's not a triple anymore. It's not three war factories on the front line anymore. But Blues has thrown so much cash at this problem that he has almost overwhelmed E1A2. And that is what uh, an EMP'd airfield with a couple of MIGs over top of it looks like. I'm not actually sure what happened right there. Uh, I guess a couple of MIGs came in for Blues and landed some shots, but now the airfield is gone. E1A2 starts the fire sale and that will ignite the end of the game. Thank you very much. We made it boys and girls through game number one. Spectacular AKA E1A2 has been defeated and game one goes to Blues. Oh, I don't know if Josh C knew what he was asking for when he said, I want a Gen Evo show match, no super weapons. But that is what we are getting. Game one is out of the way and Blues heads into game number two with one point advantage. And game two will take us to the map, Frozen Pipeline. Look, there's the frozen bit right there. Frozen little, little lakes, little ponds. Frozen Pipeline 4, a GLA mirror in the north, plain blue. This is Blues. Vanilla GLA for both of these players. Meanwhile, in the south, this is E1A2. Uh, he pretty much held his own for most of that game and maybe could have won it, but this is not sand serpent i'm grateful you're grateful it's not a china mirror on sand serpent anymore now this map does have some choke points does have some ways that it can be uh slowed up but it has so many more avenues and ability for the players to find routes that work ways to attack their opponents and, you know, GLA can have a very hit and run style. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a couple of technicals here for each player. E1A2 and Blues both going to be putting out a good number of technicals right here in the beginning of the game, trying to overwhelm the other player. E1A2 does not have the veterancy advantage that Blues has. So these technicals will have a bit of an edge, but the numbers are on the side of E1A2, so good for him. Tunnel Network is a nice touch as well. A couple of buildings getting garrisoned up. Uh, I thought that was a Toxin Tractor. I assumed he had a Toxin Tractor going over there to clear out those buildings, but he does not. And as it turns out, a extra veterancy upgrade for technicals. While it is nice, it is a nice touch, a nice addition there. Uh, based on what we just saw, it seems like the technicals only need to kill about one or two other technicals to be able to go from single vet to double vet. And they're all coming in as single vet anyways. So, ooh, double oil derrick in the corner, by the way. And Blues has not grabbed his other one. Oh, his engineer is caught on the geometry here. He is glitching out we noticed it at pretty much the exact same time that blues seemed to have noticed it always a little bit unfortunate but hey that's what we deal with here in command and conquer when the official publisher the official developers abandoned the game long long ago i mean really it's ea nothing no shade against the developers never shade against the developers the true developers of command and conquer but always with ea and uh hey you know when they don't make Generals 2, and then Ma, just fans of the series decide to make it inside of Red Alert 2, or Red Alert 3, uh, this is sometimes what happens. You get weird pathing, you get some glitches and some bugs like that. Things are getting a bit chaotic here as Blues tries to take the southern half of the map, and E1A2 tries to take the northern half of the map, trying to overwhelm these technicals one by one, ranking up higher and higher with his technical army, which is literally just camping this war factory. 
but now that this tunnel network has been established those technicals are i was gonna say you have to get out of there but i guess they just have to reposition slightly so that they are out of range of that tunnel network meanwhile the middle of the map it is still under the control of blues but it is going to be eventually secured by e1a2 based on how he's posturing with all of these buildings with this expansion right here and the toxin tractor is going to come in to help clear out these buildings I do love the attempt by Blues to kill the Veteran Academy. It's gonna take a bit more firepower than just two Tunnel Networks shooting it for a minute. Uh, Scorpion Tank's here to absorb a couple of shots and that Toxin Tractor, I would have swore, should have cleared out that building. It is not. All right, the units now get cleared out and they get insta-give there. And the Veteran Academy might actually be set upon. We'll see. No, E1A2 does want to grab that for himself. He does want to secure that veteran C advantage for his units rather than letting blues have it. Okay, that building got cleared out. Okay, there we go. All right, so now the buildings have all been sliced and diced by that toxin tractor. Oozed and goosed, goosed and oozed by that toxin tractor. I probably shouldn't go anymore with uh, those sorts of things. Expansion not taken, but he did grab a couple of the resources. Blues, that is. He did grab a couple of those resources. A couple of more technicals trying to sneak their way through. E1A2 attacking and defending at the same time. He's got his little army trying to cross the map. We'll see if it's actually able to get anything done. He's going to be going for the barracks. He might be able to get the war factory as well. A couple of tunnel networks spread throughout this base, but if he can shut down the production, that is a massive production advantage for E1A2. Plus, he's got 10 grand in the bank, so if E1A2 can keep his production up, but he's going to be losing a couple of these supply trucks. Not too big of a problem for E1A2 as his rocket buggies clean up the last of the technicals and the attack on the other side of the map keeps the front line moving. I get a feeling this is not going to be a 40-minute match going back and forth with massive late-game armies. And for a second, I thought they were focused, fired on the ground. Anthrax upgrade comes in here for E1A2, so this Toxin Tractors do even more damage. The Scorpions find their kills, and there is going to be the sell-off. And in six minutes, the score gets even up. 40 minutes on Sand Serpent, game number one. Six minutes for game number two, bringing our average game time down from 40 minutes to just 23 and that's a bit more respectable especially as we head into game number three with a 1-1 map score well i guess we'll see what the average game time is after this one welcome to tournament island 1v1 for game number three for an air force mirror in the north playing blue this is blues great map for some air force play meanwhile in the south playing purple this is e1a2 he managed to even the score make it one two one and if you're familiar with tournament island then you are going to be noticing some of these differences here in the 1v1 variant of it i do very much appreciate that the devs actually this might have been a community made map i don't know who made this map somebody put in the effort to make a 1v1 variant of this map it's not just the four player version left as is and played for 1v1 so i do appreciate that patriot missile but the airfields coming up for both players that is the thing we really care about it was supply center into airfield i think for both players that's what it looked like for both players barracks after that and that is a perfect recipe for an air mirror as we are seeing oh my gosh he actually skipped his second supply that i'm surprised by blues so the build is supply center airfield barracks airfield before second supply which seems a bit surprising we'll see if it pays off uh, he is going to get the oiled air very quickly and then potentially grab some other structures around the map as well. E1A2 escapes with his Raptor. Okay, second supply has been started and Blues, it looks like, does have enough cash on hand to finish it. If he had lost both of his supply trucks, he did lose his once... Oh, his second supply truck didn't actually build. 
Okay, now it's out. Okay, that is that is a bit of a that is a bigger delay now for blues. A much much bigger delay than it was initially looking like. Yep. All right, we'll see if blues is able to swing out of this ditch that he is currently in. He, uh, well, maybe he can do it with these missile defenders that are coming in. They might be able to get the airfield. The Raptors are in the sky. They're going to be going for the barracks. The Raptors are going to be able to silence some of those rockets. Truck comes in for the crush, but gets denied. Second Raptor, or fifth Raptor, rather. Second airfield Raptor is going to be coming in. And the barracks will get kind of surrounded here. And those missile defenders are buying so much time for Blues. This is fantastic for Blues. He was dead in the water, but now I believe in him. A couple of Rangers will eventually be able to clean up these missile defenders. They might get a power plant, though. All right, finally, the Raptors came back. And yeah, this was perfect. Really well done by Blues. I legitimately thought we were going to have a three-minute game because Blues had so overspent on his resources and he never got that second supply truck out. So his economy got completely shuttered for, you know, 30 seconds a minute, something like that. Second airfield goes down, but before the first one gets reestablished, that is a problem. But finally, it is now up. So E1A2 still has a place in this game. Oh, he catches these on the deck. Airfield goes down, but nothing on the deck goes down. So the airfield can be restarted almost immediately here by Blues. E1A2, he is growing a bank, but it's not on purpose. It's not, you know, quote unquote, he was macroing poorly. It is just because he doesn't have any production facilities to actually spend his cash with. Airfield goes down and it's perfect for Blues. Really nicely done. If he gets all of these Raptors, that might be it. He gets all of the Raptors moments before the airfield finishes. Oh, Blues, what are you doing? How is he pulling this one back from the brink of defeat economically? to the brink of victory. And then I love that E1A2 is just kind of pulling the Uno <laughs> reverse, but he went double barracks, double barracks, and he's just trying to cross the map with as much infantry as possible. So this is going to be like a perfect Uno reverse card where he's just going to go, okay, I'm going to buy a bunch of time. I'm going to make you waste your time with your air units. But these Rangers in these buildings have been critical for blues that is what has stopped e1a2 from actually being a threat on the other side of the map and now the second comanche is out oh this is not turning out well for e1a2 a nice try the uno reverse as it turns out blues had his own specialty card to play and this is a huge advantage for E1A2, but it's not over. All right, all right. Warthogs come in. None of the rockets really land. This once again has bought some time for E1A2, but this is not like when Blues bought time with that attack. And yeah, there we go. GG gets called. I thought maybe E1A2 was going to pull something out here uh, at the last minute in that way. That's why he was still in this game, but no, no, not so much here. All right, Blues takes back the momentum, puts his second point on the board, and what a goofy game. And uh, okay, what does that bring our total down to? I don't know what 51 divided by three, it might be 18 minutes. Uh, no, I have a feeling that's slightly off, but it's close enough for our average game town. Down from 40 game time, down from 40, to about 18 after three games. And let's jump into game number four. And that takes us to the map. Bad evening for game number four. Way over here on the left side, playing the USA Super Weapons General. This is E1A2. And on the right side, you'll never guess what color he's playing. He is going to be playing GLA Tox. This is Blues. GLA Tox versus USA Super Weapons General. We'll see if it's going to be early Vs or early technicals from these two players. 
But of course, E1A2 has slightly more to prove. He got to choose the matchup here, so he is going to be happy with his USA Super Weapons General, and it is indeed going to be some early Rock Vs heading out for Hum Him. He's hoping to even up the score to make things a direct fight once again take the lead away from his opponent that quad goes down so quickly and that hub v takes barely any damage off of its health and a nice oil derrick steal i really like this from e1a2 he gets out the early engineer grabs his opponent's oil derrick and gets the kill on his opponent's engineer so the slower engineer from blues does get punished there and that is a double oil derrick capture and control for e1a2 early expansion also gets shut down one single v from e1a2 getting massive work done anthrax going to be uh doing some extra damage to this humvee it will go down and it does get a supply truck evac at the last possible second and a technical will pay the price e1a2 with a phenomenal opening two and a half minutes but of course you know, this could very easily descend into a 40 minute game where the opening two and a half minutes doesn't make a difference. If the technical strike, the counter attack on the other side of the map does damage, we could be looking at a resetting of the game board here. Armadillo Outpost comes in, gonna be getting a couple of shots against those technicals. There will be a little bit of cross map action just because of that garrison and two supply trucks going to be going down immediately. Humvees did turn around from the middle of the map so they were a little bit slow on the response but they are here for the defense now. Firebase, two of them actually are here for the defense as well and the technicals will get gutted here in the main base of E1A2. Blues gets cleaned up. Did that actually buy him enough time? He lost the expansion as well. Okay, so things are definitely turning up E1A2. We'll see if he's able to close out the game, but other than this economic damage here, which is a little bit offset by the fact that he had the two oil derricks earlier, and he did manage to keep that expansion up and running down there in the south, you know, Things are looking up overall for E1A2. He is out of cash. He is low on income. But uh, Blues is about to lose a couple of quad cannons. So who cares if you're out of cash if you don't actually lose any units? Blues is going to try and juke around this supply dock. This is way too many Humvees. Assuming that they are all loaded up with units. Even if they're not, this is still just a lot of Humvees with tow missiles. And Blues is trying to draw this one out as long as he can. Ultimately, none of the Humvees will go down. Two or three of the Humvees very low on health. Good control by E1A2. Not to lose his Humvees, but instead to get the better end of that uh, exchange. And to take no losses in it. Couple of scorpions go down and blues. I mean, he's gonna have to get some, I don't know, mighty defense or something. He needs some kind of a win to put himself back on the board in this game. Fortunately, he is up two to one in the overall map score, but it is not bode well for this game. Strategy Center coming online. It's a little bit slow compared to the Palace, but all things considered, not at all a problem for E1A2. Maybe Blues just needed to get powered up to his rocket buggy army and get a couple of more tunnel networks out around the map, and now he is going to be ready to rock and roll, and he's really going to start putting some damage out on to E1A2. A couple of Scorpion tanks could catch some of these Humvees. Thinning out the numbers would be nice. Eh, we'll take anything we can get. If you're blues, you'll take anything you can get. One Humvee finally goes down. A couple of Rocket Vs, or uh, Rocket Buggies rather, are on the north side of these Rock Vs. Uh, War Factory? No, okay, he's going for the supply trucks. He does miss the supply trucks and the supply stash. I mean, sure, if you land the shots on the supply trucks, you get the kill on the supply trucks. But if the timing is off, then of course you do nothing with that strike. EMP lands on two of the rocket buggies and the rocket Vs descend. All three rocket buggies go down. Blues 
not able to escape. A couple of his scorpions are going to be getting caught in the retreat path. A couple of rocket buggies will get some damage out. That looks like one Humvee down. Once again, trading just a single Humvee. Maybe he lost two in that exchange, but trading one or two Humvees for more and more kills of the GLA army. A couple of stinger sites are here. I'm starting to uh, like some of Blues' option. I say that as more rocket buggies explode. I'm trying to find something positive here. Oh man, that's the mini map looks more and more uh, purple. It, it's almost becoming two thirds of the map is purple and one third is blue. Which, you know, if you get that uh, those black markets up and running, you can survive a good long time on just a third of the map. But I don't know how long he'll be able to survive against this Rock V army as soon as it decides to engage. Nice splits on those attacks, and it will be four quads that get potentially shut down here. Rocket buggies, do, uh, rockets, missile defenders rather do manage to get the laser lock on a couple of the quads. A third quad will go down, but the rocket buggy numbers are actually pretty high. They're high enough that they can pop off units. Uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a force fire misclick, perhaps. All right. EMPs coming in. They land on a good number of the rocket buggies, cleaning up some of the rocket buggies before the big engagement as the Humvees come in. Missile defenders behind them. Quads will be able to eat up a couple of these units, but the Rock V numbers are still really strong. Rocket buggies can dodge and weave as they snipe these rocket, these, <laughs> these Rock Vs on retreat. Laser lock comes in. The war factory has not been shut down. Shutting down the production can be such a key part of actually winning the game. Raptors come in. Another couple of rocket buggies do go down. Rock V stepping forward. This war factory continuing to pump out more and more quads, but they're just getting insta gibbed here by the army of E1A2. If he can keep up this pressure, he can keep up the damage. He can take home this game. He can even up the score two to two, but these rocket buggies have been doing a phenomenal job of just hitting and run hit and run those anthrax rockets getting a couple of extra shots there one more rock v does go down the war factory still has not been touched the raptors get a couple of more rocket buggy kills but more and more quads come on out the reinforcements are not crossing the map there are a couple of more humvees coming in but no critical damage done blues has found a pocket on the map and he's actually keeping pace with e1a2 in terms of total resources gathered two three black markets out on the field one of them is uh just under construction but still three black markets out on the field and we are starting to see the secondary economy the supply drop zones coming in from e1a2 he's going to take a second crack at this expansion going to try and break it down he will get the garrison which does remove a bit of the stronghold massive overkill on the rocket buggies of that one rock V, but he did get the kill nonetheless. Missile defenders getting a laser lock. EMPs landing all over the army of blues. E1A2 playing this one out so well, but he still hasn't clinched the final position to win the game. Expansion gets shut down. If he could close the distance with these rocket buggies, he could clean them all up. Warthog Strike comes in, cleans up a tunnel network. War Factory still standing at the expansion. A barracks and a stinger site going to be going down, just trying to extend the game. Every moment that passes, maybe there's another rocket buggy out on the map that can actually do some more damage. Slowly but surely, the area that Blues controls is being encroached upon an E1A2 who's been looking like he's been in the lead this entire game, is finally starting to get that critical damage done. Rocket buggy numbers have dwindled significantly, and Blues has not been able to replenish them. E1A2, 15 grand in the bank. Blues, two grand in the bank. In the last couple of minutes, E1A2 has shot ahead by about $10,000 in total resources gathered. They were quite even, uh, neck and neck, but E1A2 shooting ahead 10 grand, and a lot of that is currently in his bank account. It's not out there on the field. It's not being represented in the fights. 
the expansion gets shut down i guess you could come down here sh you shut down that expansion it's not a big stronghold there's not really any production there and of course the secondary economy now four black markets helps to offset any losses of expansions like this uh this little supply stash down there Oh, right as the rocket buggies swing out of position, the rock V's swing into position. Arms dealer getting deployed. This is, I think, entirely just a body block for that palace. A couple of Humvees maybe going down to the toxins of that tunnel. Missile defenders on foot, hoping to get the laser locks that will destroy these buildings. If he could laser lock the building, he would, he would have to keep popping the quads. But if he could get the quads under control and laser lock that arms dealer... That would at least shut down the production of Blues. Blues' footprint has been reduced by such a significant amount that he's got almost no more free space. Still, no, uh, no fire sale coming in here for Blues. He's still fighting this one out. Rock V's crush the arms dealer in the north. E1A2 is looking to even up the score. If he just stopped building rock V's right now, I guess he could lose the game. He's got 18 grand in the bank. If that was all rock V's, or even like two or three more airfields out on the map, full of Raptors just constantly making runs against this base, then uh, maybe, then he could, uh, you know, definitely clean this up. But if, uh, as long as E1A2 doesn't literally just fall asleep at his keyboard. All right, now the production is shut down. He almost quite literally can fall asleep at his keyboard and still win this game. Blues fighting it out to the last man and rocket. There's gonna be the start of the fire sale. We have done it. Cleaned up another game here on bad evening. Blues will take the win. Nope, Blues will take the L. Excuse me, E1A2 will take the win. Evening up the score and that will send us into game number five. And that'll send us onto the map, Cold Drops which is a map I think I've only seen once before. Yeah, you do start quite close by ground, and we will kick it off with the victor of the last game. Playing USA Laser. Let's see if the lights go out on this guy or if he can keep the win streak going. This is E1A2. Meanwhile, on the left side, playing that China nuke. This is Blues. We will see, because there are two very big potential downsides, one for each of these players. Laser General, a lot of their core units do require power to operate. One of the changes from the original Generals in Zero Hour into Gen Evo is the fact that, oh my gosh, I love this. You grab the two garrisons right next to the oiled arc. Unfortunately, it's only uh, mini gunners inside of there. It's only uh, red guard inside of there. So it does take them quite a long time to shoot down the fire base. And then of course, with the cold fusion reactor blocking the attack path, you can't actually attack through a constructing building. It counts essentially as a full-size building. Flashbang launches off and that will be the end of this building. Uh, anyways, laser units, a lot of them, like the Laser Humvee, for example, do require power. However, these nuclear battle masters, before you get that upgrade, stabilizing isotopes. Boom. That is what happens. That red guard is as brave as they come. He rushes through a nuclear tank exploding. And, uh, well, that is... That's not something you see very often, a USA Chinook bringing in reinforcement Chinese units. Uh, anyways, Red Guard coming in, and it is going to be a couple of more nuclear battle masters going for the kill, I think, on the power plant. Just trying to overrun the base. E1A2 falling to pieces completely here. He's got nothing out on the field. He's got laser, one laser Humvee, but every tank is so close to buildings, and that is going to be the nuclear battle master blowing up the power plants to keep those laser 
Razor Humvees online, and that will do it. Blues takes the lead once again. And let's hope that the pattern repeats and sends us into the ace match because finally Blues is at match point. He is up three to two against E1A2 heading into game number six. And that'll take us to Forgotten Forest for game number six. The potential breaker here for the purple China vanilla. This is E1A2. And on the brink of victory, playing Vanilla USA, this is Blues. With a very destructive, like, two tank rush in that last game, completely shutting down E1A2. That nuclear battlemaster rush on those close by ground maps is extremely powerful that was that completely caught e1a2 off guard he was quite unprepared for that war factory coming up rock v's the most likely option free scout coming in and this is one of those maps that you can get three supplies right from the beginning with the placement of the mcv or with the uh, placement of the command center and then after that, well, you got this oil derrick up here. You got that oil derrick down there. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, this map is really just you exist in your base. And what more could you ask for than just this little base? However, whether you take the back expansions or the forward expansion, that of course depends on the player and the faction play style what general they've chosen all of that in this case we are actually going to say see crusaders it will be a gat in the south to protect this oil derrick so e1a2 he gets both of the oil derricks very nicely done there and it will actually be a scan in the north from blues that reveals that airfield will be the follow-up for e1a2 and that is under the watchful eye of that spy drone so Blues will be aware of this. He will have a good idea of what is headed his way. And his decision is to just kind of create a little wall of defense. He's got his double barracks. He's got his war factory and a couple of crusaders. He is happy to play this one out a good bit slower than that last game. Gats are going to be right on the edge. And they will not get the kill on the engineer half a second earlier and they probably get the kill on the engineer a full second and they're stopping that engineer in its tracks airfield coming up for blues is going to be matching the tech of his opponent and first mig out on the field second mig about to finish up gats kind of uh looking around the front line a couple of tank hunters here as well mig lands a shot not a ton of damage, but keeps that Crusader a little bit further back. Gats are going to try and focus down the barracks, stop any missile defenders or rangers from coming out as a response. And this one Avenger is going to be able to shut down so many of those rockets. A couple of missile, uh, a couple of tank hunters will be able to get a kill on at least one of the Crusaders before they all get popped. Reinforcements potentially coming in here. Okay, now that's just a bungalow captured by e1a2 and blues will make his location secure for now e1a2 takes back one oil derrick just in time to lose another no nothing on the airfield so far for blues migs in good number but Raptors, not so much. Second War Factory is now out. Blues setting up a very solid footprint in the north. Very structured and methodical. He's got his supercharged power plant back in the corner, as far away from everything. Although he would just have to worry about low power units, playing as Vanilla USA. 
Couple more missile defenders coming in. Migs get the Firestorm. They ignite on absolutely everything, shutting down those Humvees. And that is a massive shot for E1A2. Gets the catch on those Vs and burns them all to the ground. Middle of the map has kind of been taken over here by E1A2. Double airfield could potentially be nice. I think he's going to be sticking with the war factories, though. And he actually goes internet center. He gets his propaganda center fast and then goes internet center basically immediately. Another firestorm ignites. This building still has not been broken. So E1A2 has this perfect trap set this perfect soft contain where anytime blues tries to move out of his base e1a2 will know about it will have eyes on it and e1a2 is also taken back that oil derrick in the south firebase is getting shut down no it will get established almost gets eliminated before it even is built and uh a10 warthogs will get cleaned up it seems like before they even cross the map migs are crossing Dylan gonna try and do some damage and the airfield survives. The MiGs land their shots, probably ignite a firestorm over here and the airfield survives. Otherwise the MiGs would have died. They would have been out of rockets and they would have died before the airfield got rebuilt. Blues is low on power as well. He is overextended. And I mean, the nice thing about fire bases is that they do keep working, but that production is going to be slow and he is going to have to spend cash on... Okay, he's back online. Never mind. He's already got his second cold fusion reactor up and running, but his expansion at the front has been busted and E1A2 is not letting up the pressure. If he backed off, if he was a little bit hesitant to try and close this deal, he might actually give Blues enough of an opportunity to rebuild. But this... This is enough for Blues to just get completely shut out of this game. Send us into a game number seven and lock us into an ace match with a 3-3 score from these two players. Airfield gets sold off, an airfield that really didn't do anything. Now the Firestorm is about to ignite. He forces the cell of the strategy center. And well, E1A2 has a way to keep these parade pushes moving. On bad evening, it was a lot more mobile. It was moving around the map with those rock Vs and never committing too heavily to an engagement until he was like long decided that he had already won the game. But in this case, he kind of just put on the pressure through the middle of the map and then just kept that parade push moving. E1A2 will even things up. I mean, you know, barring some truly fantastic comeback from Blues, which at this point would be truly one for the ages. Uh, perhaps unseen or unheard of in any Command & Conquer game. Blues, I guess, just kind of settling himself and readying it for the ace match. Every single time that Blues gets a victory, E1A2 strikes back in the next game. Blues wins game two, game one. E1A2 wins game two. Blues game three, E1A2 game four. Blues game five, E1A2 game six. And that will send us into the ace match, the final match of Josh C's Gen Evo show match. And at the end of the day, is there a more fitting battlefield for game number seven than Tournament Desert? Pause, get your snacks, because this might be a long one. If Tournament Desert history has anything to teach us, it's that this map is great for stalemates. And that is called Caster Curse Prep, where you say the thing you don't want to have happen, so that then... You know, it won't happen. Anyways, in the north, playing the purple toxin. This is E1A2. Evening up the score every single time. After a game, there's a counterattack. And that's where E1A2 gets his points. And going for... I mean... I don't think I've ever seen this, but... Okay, going for airfield first as infantry. This is blues. 
I don't. Maybe I have seen this. Actually, it does. It does start to ring a bell. It's like, wait, isn't there some build which is basically this? Uh, this engineer is. Is this engineer not going to get saved? Okay, no, no. I was like, wow, I can't believe Blues is going to let his engineer die to a rebel. But actually, the engineer did manage to escape. And it is going to be just a, ba a normal arms dealer build. So it's going to be airfield first versus a regular war factory build from Blues. E1A2 has some infantry crossing the map. He's kind of parading his, his way over. Did the engineer go down? I think that engineer might have gone down. That's uh, that's pretty unfortunate for Blues losing that engineer, not able to control his oil derrick destiny. A couple of quad cannons are here. They don't manage to tag the MIGs as they are returning to base. Sometimes the quads, because they have such a good anti-air range, they can get units as they're returning from home. They can kind of intercept them in that way. MIGs will do some decent damage to the quads. Not enough to clean them up. Three quads out here on the front line. There is also a technical and soon a tunnel network. Maybe this time the tunnel network will actually be established. Blues has his double supply airfield and now a war factory online. So he is playing China infantry, but he is really playing China air above all things. Another engineer gets produced, and this will be another engineer sniped, this time by a quad, it seems. Is this quad not going to seem... Oh, okay, there we go. Yep, the quad gets him. Blues switches into low power mode, I think, as that Gat Cannon finishes up. Firestorm does ignite, cleans up one quad at least. So, finally, one quad has been eliminated. Power Plant comes online as well. Blues is finally out of that power debt he was in. Second war factory coming online, but after the third supply and the double oil derrick. So really nicely set up here by E1A2. This feels very similar to those previous games, except in this case he is playing GLA. And we'll see if he's able to uh, make this GLA toxin play work here on this map. Blues had a very powerful China game just a couple of games at the go on cold drop. Ooh, Tunnel Network will not get eliminated here. Beacon also gets deployed by Blues. Oil Dare going to take a good amount of damage, and these MiGs are certainly getting their value. They are proving their worth. And uh, okay, this is the supply truck that is auto harvesting one of the unfortunate bugs of Gen Evo being based on Red Alert 3's underlying architecture one quad does go down that is uh, i think two assault troop crawlers though for one quad great trade for the gla player tunnel network i think did get cleaned up there toxin tractor as well making its way across the map e1a2 he has got a massive army but he has not gotten the big wins early on that he did that he managed to land in some of those other games. In this case, this Gat Cannon is gonna be able to eat up three quads, but also buy a huge amount of time for those MiGs to refuel and rearm. If they can get off the deck, if they can land a massive Firestorm, they can clean up a good section of these quads. Dozer is here, Firestorm does ignite, that gets three quads. Fourth quad will get eliminated and Blues has bought himself some space. Critically, he needed this win here in this moment. He needed to clean up a lot of these units and no, he doesn't stop the onslaught. So unfortunately, Blues, I thought he was starting to get a little bit of the ball rolling on his defense, but it does not seem to be happening. The airfield is powerful, but the airfield does not win everything for you. And mini gunners don't necessarily make good uh, go. Oh, this firestorm could be massive. Catches a couple of quads there in the firestorm. And the scorpions largely manage to escape. Most of the units manage to escape. Middle of the map pretty much taken entirely by E1A2. Some of these games, he just expands so fast. These MiGs, the only thing keeping Blues into this game. And 
arguably at that. Fortified Bunker is going to be buying a couple of more seconds. Second airfield is out on the field. Internet center as well. And E1A2 backs up. He just backs off. Firestorm does not ignite. A little bit of late split there from E1A2. And these uh, RPG troopers, they may have lost their tunnel network, but they have not actually lost themselves their own lives. And so they are going to... Uh, I guess get the kill on the supply center? Nope, they do get blocked. Nicely done there with the barracks. All right, enough MiGs here to ignite a firestorm. No, two of the MiGs get tra trashed immediately. No firestorm will be ignited. And I feel like I just keep waiting for the massive firestorm to catch a big chunk of this army, but it keeps not happening. A couple of scorpions get caught by that one. Second firestorm does not ignite. More buying of time with these fortified bunkers. Couple of taskmasters coming down from the high ground get eaten up basically immediately. And these anthrax shells are deadly to any infantry out on the field. Another Firestorm does actually catch two or three Scorpions there. So that's a good sunk section of the army that gets scared away. Firestorm does not ignite. Just shy of enough firepower to ignite a Firestorm. Fire uh, Fortified Bunker does manage to get established. Quads do get one of the MiGs as they return to the deck. And the MiGs just get absolutely shredded. E1A2, it's been feeling like he has been dancing around the front line for a while now. And he is finally going to descend into the base of Blues and tear it apart. E1A2 will find the damage here in game number seven. If this carpet bomb... Okay, it's going to be like an EMP or something. But Blues has been defeated. I was like, oh my gosh, if Blues lands the perfect support power and clears out the army, that would be pretty amazing. But E1A2 gets the win, aka Spectacular, manages to close us out on Tournament Desert in eight minutes, which is not what I was expecting from a Tournament Desert game in Gen Evo. But E1A2 put the gas on and never let up that was like maybe two or three minutes of just kind of posturing setting things up and then once he got rolling e1a2 just kept on pushing so e1a2 gets himself a tidy 50 dollars and blues gets the concession of 25 dollars huge thanks to josh c for sponsoring a gen evo show match huge thanks to Blues and E1A2 for stepping up and playing. And of course, big thanks to Seguro for organizing this match for me as well. A huge thank you from me to him. And that will do it. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Gen Evo action. And this is Cyber signing out.